Thank you for joining us today for this short presentation on pet first aid. This presentation is brought to you by The Dogsmith, America's dog training and pet care company. For more information on The Dogsmith, you can visit www.dogsmith.com. This first aid presentation was compiled by Bethany Jordan. Bethany is a certified veterinary technician and a certified dog trainer. She owns and operates the Dogsmith franchise in the Panhandle of Florida. The topics this presentation will cover are safely transporting an injured pet, your pet first aid kit, normal pet parameters, common pet emergencies, pet CPR and other special considerations. The first topic we wanted to cover is how to safely handle and transport your pet during an emergency. In an emergency situation the number one concern is safety safety for you and safety for your pet. With any type of trauma or injury, you need always to apply a muzzle before attempting to handle, move or transport your pet. Injured animals are very stressed. Even a, fr a friendly family pet can bite if it's in pain or scared. If you do not have a muzzle, you can easily make one from bandage, gorge, a leash or other rope material. To do this, hold the material flat and tie a knot like a shoelace so you create a loop. Slip the loop over the animal's muzzle with the knot under the chin and then secure with a bow behind the ears. It's important to put the knot under the chin so that you will eliminate contact with the eyes when securing. And you want to tie a simple bow behind the ears in case you have to remove it quickly. To transport your pet, the goal is to move them without causing any unnecessary pain or stress. A blanket can make an excellent stretcher to transport your pet in and out of your vehicle. This requires two people. With the blanket on the ground behind your pet, gently shift them onto the blanket and with one person on each side, hold the corners and pull tight. Then you can slowly lift your pet off the ground and into a vehicle for transport. The next topic is your pet first aid kit. Always be prepared and have one ready to go if you need it. Here are a few basic supplies that every pet owner should have in their pet first aid kit. Keep in mind the location of your face first aid kit as well. In an emergency situation, you should be able to access it easily and quickly. In case of trauma or injury, you should have already put a muzzle onto your pet as per the previous slide. You don't want to be scrambling around at the last minute. This is especially true for cats due to their dexterity and shape of the face. There is no effective way to make a secure makeshift muzzle. You will also need any necessary supplies to make a temporary bandage such as gloves, sterile gauze, adhesive tape, light bandage material for wrapping, and a pair of bandage scissors. You never want to put hydrogen peroxide into a wound. It kills healthy tissue and can cause more damage and impair the healing process. In case of accidental poisoning or toxic ingestion, you should have a small amount of hydrogen peroxide to induce vomiting if recommended. Never induce vomiting without consulting with your veterinarian or poison control centre as some chemicals can be more damaging with a second exposure to the esophagus. Also include activated charcoal or milk of magnesia. If recommended, these medications can help absorb the toxin or protect the body from further damage. Benadryl is also a very helpful medication to have on hand in case of snake bite, insect bite or other allergic reactions including vaccines. Always check with your veterinarian before administering. Finally, you should include all emergency information and pertinent medical information about your pets in your first aid kit. That way it's all in one place if there's an emergency. So what is normal? Recognizing when your pet is sick is absolutely critical. A common question from pet owners is, well, how do I know if there's a problem? Well, the best advice is to familiarize yourself as much as possible with what is normal, so you can easily recognize when there's a potential problem before your pet's symptoms become too severe. We're going to review a few normal parameters while teaching you how to do a basic health assessment on your pet. First, if you suspect a problem, take a minute and watch your animal's breath, and establish how many breaths they take in one minute. If you notice your pet exerting a lot of effort into each breath and using muscles of the abdomen to move air, that's not normal. 
Next, lift their lip and look at it and touch the gums. They should be pink and moist. If there are any other color or dry to the touch, that could indicate a medical problem. Now you can start to learn to take the heart rate. Here are the normal values and keep in mind that the smaller the pet, the faster the heart rate will normally be. To get a heart rate or rest through rate, count how many beats or breaths the animal takes in 15 seconds and multiply it by 4. If the situation calls for it, such as suspected heat stroke, you can take a temperature rectally with a digital thermometer. A glass thermometer is not recommended. Now that you know the normal pet parameters, practice doing an assessment on your pets while they're healthy. The more you are comfortable with what is normal, the easier it will be to recognize if something is abnormal. Now let's talk about some common pet emergencies, because yes, it can happen to your pet. Now we're going to talk about a few emergency situations that may occur with your pet. The first one, and one of the most frightening, is snake bite. The first thing to do is call your veterinarian. Have Benadryl ready in case it's recommended that you give it to the pet, as the sooner you give it, the more effective it will be. Also, if possible, bring the snake along for identification. Not all snake bites are treated in the same way. Be sure to tell your veterinarian if it's still alive before they open the container you carried it in. Heat stroke can be a very serious con concern if you live in a warmer climate. Make sure you check the heat index as well as the temperature to determine when is the best time of day to exercise your dog and how long they should be outside. Never leave your pet in a car even for a few minutes to run into a store. The temperatures inside a vehicle parked in the shade with the windows down can still rise to dangerous levels very quickly. If you do suspect that your dog's temperature has reached an unsafe level of 104 or greater, do not hose them down or saturate them with cold water. This will actually make the condition much worse by pushing the heat into their body instead of away. The best thing a pet owner can do is put the animal in your car with the air conditioning running and get it to a veterinarian as soon as possible. The next common emergency we're going to talk about is bleeding. There are two types of bleeding that can constitute an emergency situation, external and internal. With either situation, remember the basic assessment that we spoke about earlier Check the gums frequently to help evaluate the severity. Remember that the gums should be pink. If they start to turn pale or white, your pet is experiencing severe bleeding. External bleeding is usually the result of an injury or trauma. With most external bleeding, you can stop the blood flow with, with a steady direct pressure with your hands and a sterile gauze. Resist the urge to check frequently, as you will actually remove the blood clot and prolong the bleeding. If the bleeding is severe and on an extremity, you can apply a tourniquet using an elastic band or bandage gauze between the body and the wound, then apply direct pressure. Internal bleeding can be the result of severe trauma, such as being hit by a car or another medical issue such as cancer. If you suspect internal bleeding, you want to keep your pet warm and as comfortable as possible and get them to the veterinarian as quickly as you can. Common emergencies as poisoning and exposure to toxins. There are several different types of poisons or toxins that can cause an emergency situation with your pet. In the case of many poisons, such as rat poison, the products can look similar but have a very difficult chemical component. This is why it's important to collect the packaging or container so that your vet or poison control can identify the exact toxin and treat it effectively. If you suspect that your pet has ingested a toxin or poison, consult with your vet or poison control before administering any type of treatment. Different poisons are treated very differently. Make sure you have your first aid kit ready in case it's recommended to induce vomiting with hydrogen peroxide or administer activated charcoal or milk of magnesia. In case of topical toxin exposure, such as inappropriate flea product application, you can wash your pet thoroughly with a dish soap before calling, but do not administer any medications. Pet CPR. You have the ability to save your pet's life. This is an important skill and you should be familiar with it. If you find your pet collapsed, try to stay calm. Panicking will only make the situation worse. As you approach, watch your pet's chest to see if they are breathing. 
If you are not sure, you can place a mirror or piece of glass under their nose to see if they are moving air. If they are not breathing, then immediately check for a heart rate by placing your hands on each side of the animal's chest, just under the bent elbow. This is also where you'll perform chest compressions if necessary. Next, open your pet's mouth and pull the tongue out so you can check the throat for an obstruction. Once the airway is clear, you can start CPR. Keep in mind that chest compressions are the most important component of CPR, so focus the majority of your efforts here if necessary. Please remember that any health issue that can cause your pet's heart to stop functioning properly has to be severe, and therefore the chance of resuscitation is very low. However, it will give your pet the best chance possible before you can seek veterinary care. Now for a few special considerations. Know when you need to seek medical advice. There are a few special considerations when it comes to emergencies with your pet. Sometimes an issue that starts as a mal problem can become a serious issue very quickly if it persists for more than 24 hours. Also, if you notice your pet having frequent non-productive retching, you should get it to a vet very quickly as this could be an indication of bloat, especially in large breed dogs. Always remember the function of first aid is to serve as a potential life-saving bridge before you seek professional care. First aid is not a substitute for veterinary treatment and can compromise your pet's well-being if used for an extended period of time.